All right, guys, so I just want to say right up front that the results I got out of this test, testing the cheapest AR, and uh, at the end of the video, what happens is astounding. Like, I expected some decent results. I've been shooting this for a while, um, but I wasn't expecting what happened. <laughs> Skip to the end if you want. I'll break the video up into segments, but stick around because it's amazing. What's up guys, let me start by saying that this video is from me having built a very cheap AR to you if you're thinking about building a cheap AR. Whether or not it's worth your money, is it a waste of money, um, I'll take you through what I did, why I did it, how I did it, and hopefully if you're thinking about building the cheapest AR you can and you're scared about wasting your money, this video should help you and is for you. So if that sounds like you, keep listening. Okay, if you're still here, that means you want to know what I put together cheap and whether or not it works. Let's first make sure the rifle's clear. And it is awesome. So now for what I have here, this is a Palmetto State Armory uh, complete lower. I didn't build this, it just came complete. Um, it was like 40 bucks at my local gun store to do the FFL transfer. And then this is a Bear Creek Armory upper. That just got shipped to my house because it's not a gun, it's just the upper. This is chambered in 5.56, it's 16 inches long. Um, and I put Tacticon irons on it off of Amazon. They were maybe 40 bucks and a BCM gunfighter four grip. I think it's a gunfighter uh, I don't remember what it was maybe like another 40 bucks So all said less than 600 bucks and about 500 for the combination of the lower and the upper When it's not pandemic times you can get the upper and lower for even cheaper than that um, So this is literally like the cheapest crap I could put on here uh, And we're gonna take it out. We're gonna shoot it at 50 yards with five rounds of steel case toll ammo Which are literally the cheapest ammo you can shoot through the cheapest gun you can build. And we're also gonna shoot five rounds of hand load, 77 grain. Uh, we're shooting two, two, three out of this. And let's see if you can build a cheap rifle that actually shoots well. We're gonna find out. I should probably mention at this point that down below in the description, I will link everything. So if you're like scared or worried that you're gonna order the wrong stuff or things aren't gonna fit together, first of all, they fit together easily. It's all universal. But second of all, I'll put all the links down there. You can just click on them and follow them. Um, some of them might be affiliate links. The other ones, I'm just going to link them to you, use them, follow the stuff, put it together, see if you like it. By the way, the paint job is custom. Ta-da! Alright, so this isn't going to be pretty. I'm trying to figure out the best shooting position. I think I'm going to have to remove the mag every time because I want to be lower to the ground and I want to get a little rear bag action in here. Um, so, I'm going to cut in between shots and then we'll walk up and check out the target. This is steel case going on now. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fiddling because I'm gonna have to chamber around, pull the mag out, shoot, the mag in, chamber around, pull the mag out, shoot, uh, and rebuild my shooting position in between every single one. So it's about to be kind of a painful process, but here we go. Here goes shot number one. I hope it's All right, I was just about to shoot my second shot, and the box fell over in the wind. I had to run out there and fix it. Let's shoot again. And round five. At least I think this is round five. Maybe it's round six. You guys get a bonus round? Bonus. All right, guys, we're going to try filming Survivor Man style here. Let's see if this works. So we just shot five rounds of tool ammo, steel case, tool ammo, whatever. Uh, we're walking out to the target. I think I put it about 45 yards out. I was going to go 50, but there was a big mud puddle. Uh, so I had to come in a bit, but whatever. It doesn't really matter because we're not even shooting with a scope and we're shooting cheap iron. So this is a cheap test for cheap stuff. And uh, let's, go see, let's go see what kind of damage we did here. All right, it's looking good from here. Looks like, I mean, for me, for irons, I mean, the irons are literally, like, I can't see my target. The irons are way, way bigger than the center of this target. So, let's see. There it is. Let's check it out. Okay, there we go. There's uh, five rounds of steel case, tool ammo, 55 grain at 45, 50 yards, whatever it is. I just kind of paced it out, so it's it's my paces. And that's what we get. So let's shoot some 77 grain hand loads and see what we get. 
All right, we're gonna top the mag back off with five rounds of hand load. These are boat tail hollow point, which at this range really shouldn't matter, but they're also, I didn't reload these very precisely. Wasn't really going for precision ammo here. But let's see if there's any difference. Well, they barely fit magazine length. Barely, barely. So let's take these out and see. All right, so I should apologize at this point. My phone died. I thought at first that the concussion from me shooting actually killed the phone. Turns out it was out of batteries. I put it kind of up front and I was trying to shoot back towards, or like film back towards me. Um, yeah, and it, it died. It wouldn't turn back on and I was like, oh no. Uh, it turns out it just ran out of batteries. So I'm dumb. I didn't get any footage of actually shooting the hand loads. However, you can take my word for it. I actually shot them, nothing changed. Distance was the same, same target, everything. I finished the test. The results are astounding. Like, I was not expecting that at all. Um, so, let me put up a picture that shows the results because it's going to be easier than me um, trying to show you. Well, I'll show you on camera. Here. Um, and then I'll also put up, put up a picture. So, here is the steel case tool ammo. I know it's cheap ammo, but again, we're comparing cheap to cheap, right? Cheap rifle, cheap ammo. There it is. You can see all those holes. It's uh, The grid is one inch, so those are one inch squares at 50 yards with irons. Keep in mind those irons are cheap. The front sight post, or the front iron post is bigger, like way bigger than the actual target. So that was steel case. Here is hand loads. I'm blown away. You should be too. I hope you are. That's barely bigger than an inch vertical and about a half inch wide from 50 yards with cheap irons on a cheap, cheap gun. So again, Bear Creek Armory Upper, Tacticon Irons, a BCM gunfighter grip, which I wasn't even using, obviously I was rested. Uh, literally some foam and electrical tape to build up the cheek rest. I was shooting off of a rear bag using some clothing as a, as a, um, as a front bag. Um, and the Palmetto State Armory lower, the cheapest lower that they make. All of that's going to be down in the description, item for item. So check it out. Okay, so the whole point of this video was to answer the question, is it a waste of money to build a cheap AR? I'll let you decide. I'm pretty sure I'm happy with it. It goes boom when you pull the trigger and it seems to send those hand loads like a saint, not even using an optic of any kind to speak of, just irons. Um, I don't know what more you could ask for literally the cheapest upper and lower with the cheapest irons you can put on it to put out the groups like we saw with that. I don't know what more you could really ask out of this gun. Um, I would say do it, go for it, go down to the description below, find the link to all the parts, go do it. I don't think it's a waste of money at all, but you decide. Thanks for watching.